Halo Season 2 Episode 7 is out, and this episode is a mess. There's like six plot lines in about 40 minutes. <laughs> it says 48 minutes. You get rid of credits, intro song, recap, probably like 42, 43 minutes of show. They're just throwing the kitchen sink at this episode. It's crazy how much it jumps around and how little actually happens. And of course, as always, I'm going to cover it on its own merits, and I'll talk about the lore when it's relevant usually how this show is making it worse. And this episode was weird. <laughs> like you're getting ready for this big battle. Obviously every battle takes place off screen because they have no money. And everybody is just crying for like half the episode. It feels like like every conversation that people have, they're teared up or like glassy eyed. The characters are all over the place. They all have Kylo Ren syndrome where they're just whatever they need to be in that moment. There's no consistency. They're all over the place. The show doesn't even understand its own themes. The whole thing about the show that they were saying in the first few episodes was we need the Master Chief. Without that, he's just a guy named John. And the whole point was supposed to be, presumably, that the armor doesn't make him. It seems like they watched the Spider-Man movie where he gets his suit taken away by Tony Stark. And that was the inspiration for this. But they didn't actually understand it because the entire last three episodes, he's been like, where's my armor? And bitching and blaming not having his armor for reach falling. So I don't know which it is. Clearly, they don't either. Quan somehow becomes even more important, and she's smarter than both Miranda Keys, who's smarter than Halsey, who was supposed to be the smartest woman in the galaxy. A wonderful trope that is, where you have a 16-year-old who knows nothing, outsmarting genius scientists who have a niche field. So I'm going to get to that when it's relevant. John almost gets dressed fully, but they will not have that fucking helmet on until they have to. <laughs> and Perez is somehow a badass now. And Kai feels like she has more of an obligation to the Spartan Threes that she trained for two weeks than she does to John, who she's known since she was a child. They make Halsey into just a mad scientist with some weird retconning shit they do because she wanted to play with genetics, essentially. Oh, yeah, and Soren and Lara literally just walk into the Spartan training and grab Kessler. Again, great security on a top-secret base by the UNSC. Perrin Gosky, I'm kind of surprised they didn't give her a fake mustache to twirl around. Because she's just a dick. <laughs> and they turned Ackerson from a cartoonishly evil villain into kind of a simpering pussy. So that's a fun arc that makes no sense. Okay, let's just get into it because this shit's all over the place. So we start off, John and McKee sync their cycles up so they're able to meet on Halo. Incredible timing that they both touch the artifact at the same time for the first time in like seven months. Whatever, I don't even know what to say about that. I guess we'll just give credit to Cortana and chalk it up to that. Anyway, they're here in this super CGI forest area, and she's like, Halo can be used as a weapon, but it can also be used as a seed of life. So the whole thing with them knowing what Halo is kind of destroys the twist of it when you play the game, obviously. Because in the game, you're like, oh, it's this weird alien artifact. It's this weird alien ring that's the size of a small planet. And you don't really know what it is. You're kind of exploring. This show, they know what it is, they seem to know what the Forerunners were before the Spartans existed, is what this episode does. Don't really know how that makes sense. Kind of undermines the whole Spartans versus Insurrectionist deal, but whatever. And Maki is essentially saying, you know, we're the same. What if there's not good guys and bad guys? What if there's light and dark? And John's like, you just glassed the whole planet. And she's like, no, there's a war. I don't know if you get to be part of the jihadist group who's glassing planets and say, well, that's a side effect of war. <laughs> and just... Pretend that you're blameless. But it sounds like Maki wants to run away to Halo, kill everybody that's not her in chief, and just repopulate the ring with those two. I'm half joking, but that kind of does seem to be the implication is that, is that she wants them to just go to the ring and kind of start over and not worry about the Covenant human war. I mentioned a couple of videos ago that I don't know what they did to her to make her look crazy, but I saw a picture of her recently for one of those declassified things. And this isn't a huge deal. This is just a complete aside. But I feel like they went out of their way to make her ugly. Here's a picture of her and what she normally looks like. And I'm not going to go on and on about this because it's completely irrelevant to the show. But I also don't understand why they messed with the way she looks. <laughs> like she was pretty attractive before. And they made her fucking look like Doc Brown from Back to the Future. Anyway, she's about to get attacked. John says you need to go. I guess he still cares about her. We get to see a fight with the Arbiter and the ones rebelling against him on his little ship. And I also want to mention that the Forerunner artifacts just seem to be whatever the hell they need to be devices all the time. Like, it's really nice that when John lets go, it shoots out a pulse that knocks down all the Marines around him. It looks like he's a knockoff Neo from the Matrix. We see power go out through the base, and Halsey and Miranda Keys are like, everybody get out of here now. 
at their little research hole that they're in. It's okay, John's not affected, don't worry. And I wanted to share this image because this might be like the only time that they actually make the Arbiter look like a badass in the whole fucking show. Normally they do all these quick cuts and he's kind of slow or not really moving around much. But here he actually killed somebody and looks cool. The Arbiter has to go back to his fight and the priest is coming after McKee. And this whole scene just completely undermines all the people who were like jacking off to Master Chief killing an elite with no armor. Because now McKee, who's just a regular person and a small woman, runs away from a saying Healy, no problem. And it's like, if he's a super soldier and he's supposed to be on even ground fighting an elite, what does that make her? Or what does that make the elites chasing her? Are they just pussies? The show just has no idea how to maintain consistency or logic of any sort. McKee uses Cortana to get the jump on the priest. And this is also something that's really dumb, but they wanted to do it for dramatic effect. Is the priest asked where McKee is, and Cortana's like behind you. But she doesn't wait until McKee has already stabbed it in the back. Cortana tells him in time so that he turns around and could kill her for dramatic effect. And this is just a minor detail, but I feel like I'm losing my mind. When John holds the sword in episode four, it looks huge in his hand. And this one, both the Sangheili and McKee, the swords look tiny. Just seems like a weird thing to change, but whatever. So she kills the priest and the Arbiter wins. And somehow she's able to locate Halo now. And I don't know if this is supposed to be that Cortana saw what she saw or if she's just supposed to be like an astrophysicist. Because it seems like every person in this show just sees stars and recognizes where shit is. <laughs> where multiple people are like, oh, the stars look like this. And they just pick out a location. But I'm also not sure how Cortana would have seen what she saw. And obviously Cortana is not plugged into her. So don't really understand how that works. Perangoski is chewing Ackerson out about Chief being alive and his team not getting there to kill him quickly enough. And she's like, if Chief is alive and people see him, it's going to bring up questions about Reach, don't you think? And how he escaped. And if anything, I think that would just be good for their propaganda. Like the Master Chief fought his way off Reach even though it fell. And it's not like he's got access to the news or something to spread that the military abandoned Reach. He's like a top secret military asset that most people didn't even believe was real for a long time. And then they do this thing too that's really fucking stupid here where Ackerson's like, well, they're going to blame us. And Parangoski's like, what do you mean us? I'm not part of the ONI. And Ackerson makes a face like, what the hell is this bullshit? Like she's both his boss and not. Like they made Ackerson so cartoonishly evil the first few episodes. And then they want to do this big reveal where it's like, oh, it was all actually Parangoski pulling the strings. And it's like, yeah, but if you wanted to do that arc for Ackerson, have him be like sympathetic. Have him believe that Master Chief is crazy, not he's gaslighting him and lying to him and manipulating him, which is what they did. And this entire thing is absolutely moronic. They say this giant covenant fleet has jumped into the soul system. There's a weird signature there, black hole, supernova, something. We find out at the end of the episode, it's the halo ring. And what we also see at the end of the episode is that when the Spartan 3s go to fight the Covenant, John takes his own condor, jumps through slip space near them. He can see the Spartan 3s, he can see the Covenant fleet, and he can see Halo. So everyone's in this race for Halo, and they're having a space battle. And not only that, if it was this close to Onyx, like they can scan an entire Covenant fleet, you can see how they have enough detail for 100 ships or whatever it is there, and they can't detect a fucking Halo ring? <laughs> That's wild. And if they did detect it, why didn't they check it out? They keep saying over and over how much of a resource it'll be and how good for technology it'll be and humanity. So all of this is just asinine. I don't know why they did it this way. I don't know if they just don't understand how big space actually is, because that's kind of what it seems like. And this face that Ackerson is making is kind of the summation of his character this episode, is he just looks like sad boy who just got put in timeout the whole time. Perangoski says, send in the Spartan 3s. And Ackerson's like, they're elite soldiers. They're not designed to attack a Covenant fleet. And Parangossi's like, you train them. I'm deciding how we use them. A complete waste. The fact that they didn't explain what the Spartan 3s are. I cannot imagine anybody who's only watched the TV show has any fucking clue what's going on at this point. Because it looks like they're just regular soldiers with decent armor. Perez became one in two weeks. <laughs> Why wouldn't all of them be that? This whole thing is so stupid. It's unbelievable. So we cut... Megan Rapino and her squad catch up to John. They're supposed to shoot and kill on sight. She's like, we're supposed to take you in. And John's like, no, you're not. And then she's like, oh yeah, shoot him. <laughs> and this entire scene is just like, oh, John is wearing the ultimate plot armor. None of these people shoot. They all decide that they're not fans of women's soccer anymore. 
So they ditch Megan Rapino, leave her on her own, and then Kai comes up and bitch smacks her in the back of the head. Here you go. Here's a nice still frame of Kai punching her in the back of the head. All of this is just fucking wild. Like they've had like four or five chances to shoot John on sight, and this time he just stares him down, and they're like, nah, we're good. I, I don't even know what to say about that. There's no build up, there's no explanation. They just fucking turned on her. I think me saying that they were tired of women's soccer might be more thought than the writers put into this fucking scene. And here's where we get to the shit that I'm just tired of in media. Miranda's like, you made a mistake after your four months of work, and what you missed was the cipher involves blah, 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 and just starts moving pieces around. It's all just bullshit. I'm just so tired of the young to mid-20s kid is a super genius who's smarter than the old person because the writers of the show hate old people. (laughs) And that's kind of just what it seems like. This show does it twice in this setting, which is amazing. Like It's not bad enough that Miranda Keys upstages Halsey. Quan then upstages both Miranda and Halsey. But what we do see here is that this thing contained DNA from humans and forerunners. And the forerunner lore and the actual lore is really confusing. It's definitely my weakest part as far as knowledge of Halo lore. Because 343 kind of retconned it with Halo 4. Because at the very end of Halo 3... When Johnson gets lasered, the monitor calls Chief a forerunner. And the initial thing they were going to do is that humans were some kind of descendant of forerunners or genetically related, something along those lines. And Halo 4, and then 343 came in and had Greg Bear write this forerunner trilogy. And it's one of the hardest trilogies to read, just in general, I think, but definitely for Halo. Like Cryptum, you can kind of understand what's going on. And then by 2 and 3... It gets to the point where you're rereading scenes over and over, and you're like, I don't know what's happening. And I think that's just the author's writing style. It's super hard sci-fi, super hard to follow. And then you get these weird dumps in the games, too, with like the librarian being like, oh, like I planted seeds in certain people's DNA, and it got passed down for millennia with this eventuality. And then she activates seed or whatever, and now he's special, and he can't be composed. At least that's how I understand it. I'm sure someone else will disagree with that interpretation, but they just kind of do these big dumps and there's not like a ton of explanation. And it kind of seems like it's all over the place. Anyway, as far as the show goes, there's human and forerunner DNA here. (laughs) So we know, as we already did, that this was a forerunner site of some kind. And here's where you can see that the showrunners just hate the military because they made them fully fucking retarded and evil. We see this massive covenant fleet And the response is to send in one wave of Spartans in Condors. So obviously they get wiped out without even getting close to a ship. Parangasi's like, send in wave two. And Ackerson's like, what's the point in this? Like, they're they're all just going to die. And Parangasi's like, if we lose Halo, then we lose everything. I'm okay to sacrifice a few thousand people. So it's like, oh, well, the show doesn't explain this, but assuming they're going from the lore. Good thing we have all these specially trained soldiers that we raised for a decade just to feed them into the meat grinder where they have zero chance of accomplishing anything. That's great military strategy and use of resources and lives. And just from the show's perspective, there's supposed to be some kind of special unit. And again, it's the same thing. It's like you're putting them in condors, not even real ships, and just running them into the Covenant. This follows the genius plan to just completely abandon Reach, which was a military stronghold, for what? To send your special units to get murdered without a fight? Wonderful. This is like, if you wanted to lose the war, you would do everything that they're doing. And this is confusing too, because Parangasi says, what do you think is at the center of that system? It's Halo. So did they just find that out from Cortana? Did they already know and just not bother to send some ships out to investigate? Did they find that out and not call every ship in the UNSC to jump to that system right now and get there as soon as they can? I don't know. She just knows the Halo's there and is willing to have all the Spartans die for it. Good thing they tried to sacrifice John for this, by the way. He wouldn't have been useful at all here. And they don't have control of Cortana. Another genius move. And we get a few minutes of Soren and Lyra in this. Soren does this backstory where he's like, this is where you find out what Spartans are made of. And essentially it's just five kids getting the shit beat out of them by police with batons for like days on end. I'm not sure what kind of training that is. The training that the kids go through in the books is plenty brutal enough. There's no need to make it just sadistic. My guess, again, is that this is like culture war motivated horse shit where they want the image of police-like figures beating on children. That's how it seems to me. Because I don't really understand what the point of this training is. He says it's to test their bravery. And he also says that only Silver Team and him made it through. Don't know how any of that works. Don't know how any of that's effective training. Kind of just stupid. And then all of a sudden, he completely flips from his entire arc of hating Halsey and the Spartans. 
you know, like how when he escaped as a kid and went to the rubble and became a pirate and then had a family and then seemingly hated Halsey to now being like, this is Kessler's time. Let's see what he's made of. And all of a sudden he's an advocate for kids getting the shit kicked out of him for Spartan training. <laughs> this is why I said everyone has Kylo Ren syndrome. They're just all over the fucking place. And then on top of that, they've turned Soren into kind of a pussy. He's had hardly any screen time, but there's been multiple times this season where he says something and Larry's just like, no, we're doing this. And he's like, oh, okay, honey. So after she bosses him around, he agrees to eat Kessler. <laughs> Perez stares at the quarter that John gave her for like 30 fucking seconds <laughs> to the point where I'm like, did they need to hit a runtime? Because that's kind of what it feels like with this. And a more subtle show, you would have just seen the quarter in her hand or maybe she slips it into her pocket or whatever. She literally just holds it front and center of the camera for 15, 20 seconds. They actually cut away and cut back and she's still staring at it. Fucking wild. Anyway, one of the other Spartans comes in and she's like teary eyed and saying she's scared. Perez is saying she's scared. And somehow she's the boss in this bitch. I don't know. But she tells the other chick, essentially get it together. You'll be fine. And we'll cover each other's asses. Amazing arc for her. From comms officer to PTSD chick to scared of the covenant to Spartan. All in like a month. It's amazing. And it was all off screen. As all great writing is. John and Kai are bickering. She's like, John, you lied to us. You got us pulled out of the field. What was I supposed to do? And John's like, you... Like you sided with them when they were trying to kill us. And the face that he's making is my face during this entire fucking show. Still don't really understand why Kai kicked the shit out of him and then went and saved him. I guess we'll just move past that. <laughs> There's also a really weird line here where she says, I made a mistake. I know you don't know what that feels like, but that's what humans do. When he was the first one to take his pellet out, and he also fucked a Covenant spy. And also all he's done this season is lose fights and get his ass kicked. So I don't even know what that line means in this context. This is where they completely change the lore to the point that I don't even understand what they're trying to do. They say that Halsey knew about the Forerunners prior to her Spartan research. And then on top of that, she found this DNA that's human and Forerunner and searched out kids who had this certain DNA signature from the Forerunners. And those are the Spartans. I wonder if the people who wrote the second season actually watched the first season. Because the insurrectionists showed up in the first scene of the first season. And we're like half the time on screen. And obviously the original lore, the Spartans were created to keep peace and avoid a civil war in the galaxy. And then the Covenant showed up shortly after. In the Fall of Reach book, their Mjolnir actually doesn't have shielding at first. The shielding comes later on from stuff they get from the Covenant. It's been a while since I've read it, but they do something where they modify the technology from the Jackal shields or the Sanghealy shields. And then the Mjolnir armor has shielding. So for this story, for the TV version... Now it's like, oh, she was just researching shit about the Forerunners and wanted to experiment like a psychopath on children because they could have good genes with some genetic marker that she has no idea how it can even be used. She just wants to mutate them into Spartans. Fucking crazy. And then Quan's like, oh, you use children. And Halsey's like, we need Spartans. Blah, blah, blah. Everyone did. Which at the time and with this framing, she didn't need them. She's just a lunatic. Miranda and Halsey are trying to figure shit out. Quan touches this little thing, and because she's one of these blessed ones or whatever the fuck, it lights up for her. So obviously that's going to be the key to solving this, so Miranda and Halsey can suck it after their years of research and probably decades of academic research. And I've had a lot of criticisms of this show, but this might be the dumbest thing in the entire fucking series, and that is a statement. Ackerson goes and puts the spike on the computer and is like, run simulation, and he sees that the, that the spike for the Covenant ship will actually blow up not just their whole fleet or not just shut down one ship and possibly Halo. Retarded. If the Covenant had this technology, they would literally just put a grunt on a ship, fly them into every system where there's humans, and just fucking blow up one next to each planet. Be done with it. It's like they went to the J.J. Abrams School of Writing where every ship has the power of five Death Stars. This was in the trailer a lot. I think this is supposed to be one of those moments where you're like, yeah, get him, John. Revenge. Because he's been cartoonishly evil the whole time. But then at the same time, this episode is trying to undo that. And also, John says that he wants to punch a hole in his chest. Kind of makes John look like the villain. Usually when someone's choking somebody like this, they're not the good guy. <laughs> I don't think people are calling Darth Vader a protagonist. Just a weird decision. This whole story is full of those, I guess. But this one's just strange to me. And John wants his suit because apparently he can't do anything without it. Even though I thought his whole arc was that he's more than just a suit. Whatever. Apparently they need Ackerson's face. And I don't understand this either. Like Cortana is running the entire base right now. 
and she can't just force the door open. Like if Agerson got hurt, the Mjolnir would just be stuck, whatever. And I'm going to go out on a limb here. I'm not going to be surprised if the next episode has Kai kind of do a shitty version of Kurt's death and blow up the ship and they actually destroy the Halo ring. <laughs> I mean, everything else they've done with this show has been so wild that I kind of wonder if they'll go that route so they don't have to worry about it and they can try to keep the show low budget next season. But who knows? The next episode is called Halo, so I should be wrong. But at this point, is anything beyond guessing? And here we can see Ackerson's kind of teary-eyed, saying that the Spartans were his project, so he cares about them. And John's like, yeah, I've heard that before, because he hates Halsey still. But yeah, this is why I said everybody's crying. He looks like he's about to burst into tears for like half the episode. <laughs> Miranda offhandedly asks about Captain Keys, and Halsey's like, he's dead. And she's like, a bunch of people escaped Reach, maybe he was somewhere else. And Halsey's like, no, I saw it. And they kind of just gloss over it. There's no big emotional moment. There's not much at all. Just a quick like, yeah, he's gone. Deal with it. Miranda walks away upset. And then Quan figures out the puzzle. And she's like, oh, it's stars. And she just kind of starts putting them in places. And we see flashes to her in that cave. But yeah, not really sure what to say about this. She's like one of the chosen ones or whatever. Miranda walked down the hallway and came back. And now she's over her dad's death. Awesome. We saw more emotion than this in the opening cut scene from Halo 2 about his death than we did in this show just now. They see all the suits of armor. John talks about Vanek. And now they basically they're going to cry. Awesome build up for a final battle for the season. Especially when he was referring to Vanek's corpse's meat two episodes ago. And they already had a funeral for him. Again, Agerson gets scolded. John's like, you're going to tell everybody what Perangoski did on Reach. And you're going to tell him what you did on Reach. I'm the boss now. And Agerson just kind of bends over and takes it. <laughs> I guess they just gave up on sending any more people in. In the middle of a military base. That they could just lock down at any point. If it wasn't for the magical Cortana. They made Ackerson go from cartoonishly evil to just pathetic. Kylo Ren syndrome. Here you go. He's more on the verge of tears now. And he's like kind of breathing heavily. And he's like, I'm going to lose everything. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what they were thinking with this arc. Like, you want to have a guy go from bad to good. He has to be bad within reason or with good motives or something. You can't make him mustache twirling villain to your hero. And then have him just suddenly flip and be like, oh, he's cool now. And you're rooting for him. We go back to the magical space puzzle that only Quan can use. And she put the stars up in the first place, but she's like, oh, it's supposed to be a clock. So then she lines up all the stars where they're supposed to, and the door opens. And Halsey and Miranda are like, wow, I dedicated years or decades of my life to this research. And it was all undone by a 17-year-old child who knows nothing because she has special blood. <laughs> there you go. She solved the puzzle. It makes a ring, and the door opens. Halsey also does refer to this symbol with something to do with a library. And we're going to see here in a minute that it actually is what she calls a forerunner city, which seems like a library or obviously hints to the flood, but only really if you know the lore. For the TV show only people, I would have to think they're like, what in the absolute hell is happening? We get our first light bridge of the show. And of course, it's Halsey, Miranda, and Quan walking across it because why not? And also, it like kind of assembles itself across, which is stupid. And kind of an important detail in a minute here because the thing is going to collapse and they have to run and then it disassembles itself slowly so that they can escape dramatically. Here's where Kai gets her Kylo Ren syndrome moment. She wants to go with the Spartan 3s because they're all going to die. John's like, you heard what she said. If the Covenant gets the Halo, everything dies. And Kai's like, I can't give up on them. I know I've known you my entire life, but I met them two weeks ago. And I guess I trained them by sticking them in a simulation and yelling at them. So piss off. I'm going with them. It's just so nonsensical. I don't know how they came to this conclusion that this was the way the story should go. I want to get this image in here too to make sure we see that almost every character looks like they're going to cry at some point. He's worried that she's going to be the one with the spike in her hand and she's going to blow up, which at this point I think is like a 99% certainty. The show is weirdly predictable and unpredictable at the same time. Like Stuff like this seems pretty obvious. And also John coming back to save Perez seems like a given at this point. But as far as big picture, I actually have no clue. That's why I guess they would blow up the Halo ring. <laughs> because why not? So Halsey uses that little disc that she already had and opens the door. And it looks like a lab. There's a dead scientist cradling some kind of sci-fi USB. And she wants to grab it. You can see vials of the flood, I'm guessing, in the lab. And because they don't want the flood to escape or it's designed that way, the place starts to collapse about a minute after they're in there. And Miranda grabs the USB... And we'll see what it contains next episode, I guess. They're escaping on the bridge as it's collapsing. 
Halsey looks down and gets like entranced with this forerunner city. And Miranda has to grab her. This is about as much drama as we get this episode. The bridge collapses just in time for Halsey and Miranda to, j- to jump a little bit. And they escaped the no enemies having forerunner lab. So their solar system thing that was the puzzle for some reason starts having red stars. And this is supposed to be where they expanded and conquered is how Halsey interprets it. Quan says growth. And we see that picture on the cave. Presumably this is foreshadowing the flood. Again, if you're a TV show only person, I don't know what you think at this point because this shit is just all over the place. They're dumping in all kinds of terms. Almost none of it's explained in the show. So yeah, I don't know what they're thinking or what's going on. McKee and the Arbiter are like, our fate is tied to the ring now. And then she puts the mark of shame on her chest. This show has said fuck a few times. I think the least they could do is show some titties. (laughs) I mean, that would be about the only positive of this whole fucking series. And definitely this episode. But she just burns herself. and Now they both have the mark of shame. Again, if you're TV only, you just see a brand. I guess you interpret it however you want. Soren and Lara interrupt the Spartan training with no resistance. They just walk right in. Lara grabs Kessler, and Kessler looks scared of Soren as he beats up all the guys that were going to beat up the kids. And the choreography is fine. I mean, he's still a Spartan, so he kicks all their asses. And he's a pretty good fighter for a guy with one giant masturbation arm. So not much to say about it. This plot line, I don't know if anybody cares about, and it's dragged on for the whole season. And we get another really weird scene here. <laughs> At this point, it's almost like John is an anime harem protagonist. But he's got McKee. He's got Cortana, weirdly. <laughs> and now it seems like he has Perez, too. She's annoyed that he's not going to go fight with them. And she's like, you know what it would mean to them to fight next to him and what it would mean to me. And you can see she's also teary-eyed. Everyone in the show is always almost about to cry, it seems like, right before a big battle. And I don't really get this whole thing with these two. Like, he saved her in the first episode. They had a dinner where he forced himself inside later on. And then he saved her on reach and was like, see ya. And now she has a thing for him. And based on his reaction, it can't really tell what he thinks. I guess he's torn between the blonde and the brunette. I don't know. (laughs) But, you know, if they go to Halo to repopulate, he can just take both. Jesus Christ. Anyway, so she's salty. He's not coming with him. He says he has his own mission. I guess I would just call this Kylo Ren syndrome again. Like, she needs to be attached to him for this scene to be emotional. Therefore, she is. He says, they don't talk about the people that die around me. They just give me all the credit for the victory. And again, you can see she's even closer to crying now. And she's like, but it might just be something you can feel, that they can feel. And then she says something along the lines of, did that quarter come up heads 10 times in a row or 11 times in a row? Or did you make it do that? And then he looks pensive. So obviously, I'm assuming he's going to come back to save her. Screw the rest of the Spartan 3s. They're like 14 years old. He's got a new interest. (laughs) It's a shame because it's actually a pretty well-acted scene. And as she leaves, he says Perez and then doesn't say anything else. And she's like, I'll be fine one way or the other. As in, I'll come back alive or I'll die there. It's just a really undeserved scene from a writing perspective. They've done nothing to build their relationship up. If you think about all the screen time we've had this season, in seven episodes, looking at probably six hours, they've had like 10, 15 minutes together. A couple little talks. Nothing deserving of a fucking romance, though. <laughs> Halsey and Miranda talk. Miranda says that she'll finish Halsey's research. Even if she doesn't, she pops this thing open and is really excited. Not sure why. I don't have any clue if they have any idea how to read the data on this thing. But they have it, so that's a good thing, I guess. Whatever. When Miranda pops it open, Halsey runs off. And we see John walking in front of a bunch of people to make it known that he's alive. I still don't think it's a particularly big deal, but they made it a plot point to say that it is. So, Although... Out of all the times for him to not have his helmet on, this is one of the dumbest. He's in the base, but he's standing literally in front of his own hologram and trying to show off to everybody that he's alive as the Master Chief. Still no helmet on. Perangoski tells Ackerson that she knows that he looked at the simulations. If she didn't want him to, I'm not sure why she allowed it. (laughs) Anyway, she's like, he's like, what about the Spartan 3s? You can't do this to them. And she's like, you mean I can't do this to you? And then a Condor tries to take off. John says the Master Chief's alive, blah, blah, blah. And then Ackerson's kind of laughing at her, and she has him arrested. Yeah, I don't even know what to say about this. It's all just so jumbled. Like, she's in charge. He followed orders. Now she's mad and blaming him. And this is what I'm saying. Like, as he's getting arrested, she's like, when the story of Reach gets told, I think they're going to listen to him, don't you? And it's like, why let him? Shoot his fucking condor out of the air as he leaves the base. Don't let him talk to the media. Deny anything he says. Who cares? Oni controls the media. They control everything. Just a weird plot point that they tried to throw in there just so that Ackerson could smirk at Perangoski. 
Perez left this quarter where John was going to fly out of in the Condor, and now he looks conflicted. I assume he's going to save Perez, Kai's going to stay behind and blow up everything, and then we're going to end the season with John and Perez in a Condor, either headed to Halo if it doesn't get blown up, or just drifting in space if it does, as a shitty version of the ending of the first game. There's so many moving parts that are all so disjointed. No one acts logical. I have no clue. So Kai and Perez are all getting ready to jump. Kai tells Perez to relax, that stop dwelling about John. He'll be all right. And this is kind of the end for this part. And we go to John one more time. And this is what I was saying about how stupid this is with the Halo location. So John comes out of slip space. He looks at the Covenant. We cut over to that little scene with Kai. And when we cut back, we see McKee's Covenant ship. He looks a little bit forward, and there's the Halo ring. So all this shit is within a stone's throw of fucking Onyx, where their super secret base was. They were scanning this system for Covenant fleets, apparently, and ignored the Halo the whole time. That's it for this one. This video went way too long because there was so many plot threads and so much to go over. I'm going to stop now. If you're still here, comment below. Let me know what you think of the show. Like and subscribe and all that shit. Thanks. See ya.